In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use the negative exponent rule. Think about a problem that says 7 to the third over 7 to the fifth. Now, according to the quotient rule, we should be able to say 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So 7 to the negative 2 is what we get. But you can also think of it this way. 7 to the third is 7 times 7 times 7. And if I put 7 to the fifth in the denominator, we know that any 7 divided by 7 makes 1. So that pair of 7's crosses out, and the next pair, and the next pair. And so I'm left with two 7's in the denominator, and we could write that as 1 over 7 squared. So we see that 7 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 7 squared. Now this works for all bases, not just 7. There's nothing special about the 7 or the 3 or the 5 here. So this rule holds in general. The negative exponent rule says that if you have a base with a negative exponent, then you can write that as 1 over base to the positive exponent. So for this exercise, we'll write each expression with a positive exponent, and then we will simplify. So here we have 9 to the negative second. We can make this a positive exponent if we write it in the denominator, and then we can simplify 9 squared is 81, so this is 1 over 81. In part b, 4 to the negative third becomes 1 over 4 to the positive third, and then we can simplify 4 to the third is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. On part c, we have a negative base for the first time, and I want you to notice that when we move this to the denominator, the negative 4 becomes positive 4, but the base stays the same. And that makes sense, because on all the other problems we've done, when we move the factor to the denominator, the exponent changes sign, but the base does not. So here we would expect the exponent to change sign, but the base should not. Now I have 1 over negative 2 in parentheses to the fourth power, well, negative 2 to the 4th will be a positive number. It will be 1 over positive 16. So now let's look at the same problem but without exponents. In this case, the negative is not part of the base. We have negative 2 to the negative 4. So the only thing that the negative 4 exponent can affect is the 2. The negative sits here kind of separately. So when I move the 2 to the denominator so that my exponent can become positive, the negative here, this negative, has to stay in the top. And I'll have negative 1 in the top and 2 to the 4th in the denominator. See, this negative has to stay here because it's not part of the base. Now 2 to the 4th is 16, but this negative will remain in the top. And with 5 to the negative 1, I'm going to move the 5 to the denominator so it will be 1 over 5 to the positive 1, but we could just write 1 over 5. Now I want you to try these on your own before you watch the solutions. With 6 to the negative 2, we can write it as 1 over 6 to the positive 2, and 1 over 6 squared is 1 over 36. With 5 to the negative 3, we can write that as 1 over 5 to the positive 3. And 5 to the third is 125, so we have 1 over 125. With negative 3 to the negative 4, my base is negative 3, so I move the whole thing to the denominator, but the base retains its sign. And negative 3 to the fourth power uh, becomes positive 81, so I have 1 over 81. On part d, negative 3 to the negative 4th, the negative 4 has a base of 3. The negative is separate, so the negative stays in the top, and 3 to the 4th moves to the bottom. Now 3 to the 4th is 81, so I have negative 1 over 81. And with 8 to the negative 1st, I have 1 over 8 to the 1st, which is simply 1 over 8. Now the same rule applies 
to a negative exponent that's in the denominator, we can make that negative exponent positive by moving it to the top. And just as a reminder, this is what we were just doing. We can make a negative exponent positive if it's in the top by moving it to the bottom. So it turns out that simply moving something from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top changes its sign. So now let's write each expression with a positive exponent and then simplify. On 4 to the negative third over 5 to the negative second, each of these has a negative exponent. So in order to fix them both, we'll have to move both. I can make 4 to the negative third positive by writing it in the bottom. I can make 5 to the negative second have a positive exponent by writing it in the top. Now I can work out 5 squared is 25 and 4 to the third is 64. On part B, 3 fourths to the negative 2. I'll have to assign the negative 2 to both the 3 and the 4. Now I can see that both need to be moved, so I'll move 4 to the negative 2 into the top, and 3 to the negative second will move to the bottom. Now that gives us 16 over 9. Pay special attention to part C. This is where a lot of people mess up. Uh, I have 1 over 4x to the negative 2. I want you to think about what part of this expression has an exponent of negative 2. And the answer is only the x. The exponent on the 4 is not negative 2. The exponent on the 4 is unwritten and it is a 1. So if I want to make the x have a positive exponent, I move only the x to the top. The 4 stays in the bottom because it is not part of this negative 2 exponent uh, base. Now on part d, both of these have negative exponents, so we'll have to move them both, and that gives us y over x to the fifth. So I want to take a look at one more time uh, with 1 over 4x to the negative 2. The 4 has to stay in the denominator because its exponent was already 1. It's very important. On this fraction, 3 fourths to the negative 2, we did it this way on the last slide, but I also want you to realize you can think of this 3 fourths as one entire piece and the negative makes it flip over. So instead of applying the negative 2 to the top and the bottom, let's think of it as the negative makes the fraction flip and now it's positive. So if I have a fraction with a negative exponent, if I flip it over, now the exponent's positive and I still end up with 16 over 9. So it's either way you like to look at it. This turns out to be very convenient though if you just think of a negative exponent as flipping the fraction over. So for practice let's simplify a few more together. I have 2 to the negative third over 7 to the negative 2. So both of these have negative exponents, so they'll both have to move. 7 to the negative 2 has to go in the top, and 2 to the negative 3 has to go to the bottom. And now they're both positive exponents, so I now have 49 over 8. For part b, I'm going to think of the negative as causing the fraction to flip over, so that will be 5 fourths to the second power. Now I square the top and square the bottom, so that's 25 over 16. For part C, I will move the Y into the top, but the 7 has a positive 1 exponent already, so it will say Y squared over 7. And with part D, both of these have negative exponents, so I'll move them both. When I put Y to the negative 8th in the top, it becomes Y to the positive 8th. X to the negative 1 in the bottom becomes X to the positive 1, which is simply Y to the 8th over X.